yet is Rossi. Medved Gavrit Chiesna. Okay, guys, listen to this. If you are somebody like this who doesn't know how to use sandpaper files, this kit's not for you. Just walk away, turn off the video, you won't be interested. But if you want to learn something, if you want a bit of a challenge, if you want to sort of stretch that skill set, stay tuned, I'll show you how to do it. The first thing you need to do is get away from this instruction type methodology. You need to start thinking yourself about construction. You need to drive fit a lot. It really isn't that hard. We are not welding carbon steel. We're dealing with plastic. Let's get on with it. Hello friends, welcome to the first part of the build of the Austin Armoured Car. Uh, just some notes first of all, okay, um, I just recommend this to you before undertaking construction. Use quick set glue, be it Tamiya or otherwise, it will really help you out on this build. Um, tools at the moment, basically nothing except, you know, usual sharp side cutters, your craft knife and you are definitely going to use this a lot. Tidy up is absolutely essential in every single part. Um, do not shortcut that or else you will be in a world of problems. Right, okay, so I'm gonna show you what I've been doing. Okay, so first of all, I've done this first step here, uh, which is construction, obviously, of the chassis rails. So the way to do this is, um, of course, to get all of your parts on one side than the other. I'm going to show you how to construct this next part in a second. Um, just be careful, check the alignments time and time again. There's all little tiny details you need to check, like the orientation of that part, um, this part as well here. Sometimes you just need to check in the instructions a little bit later on how these things work. Okay, so what else have I done? Engine. Let's have a look at this. Okay, yeah, I've been building up the engine to some extent. Now, my plan here is, because things are multiple coloured, um, basically we've got black, we've got aluminium colour for some of the engine components, and the chassis itself is black, I want to add the engine in later on, uh, but the sump is black, so um, my idea is to get parts glued into place that are all the same color and then paint them as one and then other parts you know just to sort of try and quicken things up add details on later on the optional parts as well we'll cover that in a second so let's try and get this chassis rail together right now um, also to note as well I've left out one part I'll explain that in a second okay yeah so construction because everything's uh set in one side it just makes things a little bit easier the parts do line up relatively easily as well so what i do is i start on one end and using the quick set glue just basically tack in on one side like so let that set and just go along, easing everything into position. Now this is the only tricky thing, is this central rod. Just make sure that that gets lined up. You need to use a little bit of the cement to ease parts into position because the holes are not you know, wide enough in some cases, but that does not pose any construction difficulties. Now just this central bearer at the front here, pop in some quick set. Now the thing is to have everything at the, you know, perpendicular, everything at right angles. Just check to make sure everything's set up correctly and that everything's seated correctly. Okay, now just a quick uh, check. You don't need these vernier calipers at all, but uh, if you've got them, use them. Just 
seems on pretty parallel here. Now what, uh, okay, some very important instruction notes, okay? There's a lot of people gonna say this is unbuildable and there's so many problems with it, okay? One of the things, and this is a characteristic of the mini art kits, is that many of the location points are undersized. Now, that's not a massive problem because when you add the glue in, you can squeeze the part in. The problem is this, because this kit's in many, many different colors, etc. If you try and if you try and paint all your parts on the sprue and then glue them in position, you end up with this like gooey mess. So you need to make some compromises, or I suggest you make some compromises, and I've already done that. So I'm jumping all over the instructions, which is something that you should do, because they're not instructions, they're just location diagrams, okay? So I've already got on my um, wheels, the axles, the um, suspension, etc. Because I want all these parts firm, I want them lined up, I want them true. Uh, the um, trade-off for that is that these parts are meant to be gone metal in colour and I probably won't paint them gone metal. I can live with that basically. Um, what I want is firm construction joints and alignment and then the rest of the stuff when it goes in, if it fits or not, we can deal with that but basically we want the vehicle true. We want it sitting on all its wheels. We want the chassis true. Okay, more construction notes. Um, for the last uh, 30 minutes, I've been just dry fitting, going back and forth with the engine, with various parts. And as you can see, I've assembled um, the floor of the interior. Now this part, when you assemble it, it actually warps and it curves upwards and that can be a big problem. So what you do is actually bend it down. You don't need to put it in hot water or anything like that, just, and that'll uh, get it realigned, okay? Now, there is a good point about this, this one. This has got definite attachment points to the chassis, and these are you know, really gonna be helpful. And it's actually made me consider how I'm gonna do um, various parts until I'm gonna paint. And I wanna get as far as possible with gluing parts on. But because these have got positive attachment points, um, I've actually had to add in, I think this is the gearbox actually, this thing or a transfer case. And um, that's had to be glued in because I, I know that the it's gonna be difficult to get this with the clutch into position. Now that shaft there, I'm just gonna trim that out. I can still leave the engine separate, but what I want to do and to make sure that I get this part in properly. There's a little bit fiddly to do, just do it like that. All right. Okay, so this has got positive alignment. There's no doubt about where that goes. What you need to do is absolutely ensure that this here is um, flat, you know, parallel, or what will happen is this part, the firewall, which goes on here. I think it's actually, which way around is it? Like so. You won't get these parts lining up correctly. So make sure this is flat. Just bend it, bend it down, just using your fingers. Okay, I'm gonna continue. I just wanna get more and more parts on and then I'm gonna to come to a sort of tipping point where I need to commit to paint. Okay, let me show you some cool stuff, okay? Uh, mini art used to be really um, nasty sort of plastic to work with. And I thought I was gonna to have to show you how to do, um, how to remove these parts using like a razor saw. Well, to be honest, you don't even need to do that at all. This, this is, they've changed it so much that you don't even need, the, I thought I needed the God hand nippers or this or that, but look, it's easy to remove straight from the sprue. It doesn't snap like before. Now to clean up though, um, instead of sanding, what I do is now I just sort of pair away at the plastic like this, just using the knife. Okay, okay these optional parts here, it gives you 
the plastic parts and um, you can use them basically they can be removed they they fit really well or you can use wire um, or you can just totally not put them in because you basically can't see them now what I'm actually doing I'm using a mixture of the plastic parts and I recommend you get some of this uh, 0.5 millimeter rod from Evergreen this stuff's pretty handy so I've used a mixture in between here I've still got another rod to put in but that one I've done with the yeah 0.5 millimeter but the supplied plastics fine enough and it fits perfectly um, also underneath as well there's some uh, these links here I've used the 0.5 rod as well to put that in there it's just uh, some optional detailing again other stuff I'm doing I'm actually adding more and more to the engine um, I'm going to test out my hand painting skills and I've even got the exhaust rigged up now that I can just sort of drop this in okay I've reached sort of saturation point in terms of assembly can't go much further without sort of painting uh, if I want to progress this so that's what we're going to do I'll just show you basically I've only got uh, a very few sub assemblies the floor plates just there because I've been continually test fitting I must have test fitted this about 20 times every single time I added on component I just dry fitted everything just to see if there was any interference so basically we are here the chassis assembled detailed with that rod uh, the small photo etch bits have been added on so I've got the radiator paint separately and I've got the pipe that goes from the radiator to the manifold there um, and the engine is dry fit as well and I've even attached parts like the exhaust all those pieces that are really fiddly to assemble at the last second um, I don't need to deal with the only thing I need to deal with is hand painting bits and pieces details but I'm quite happy with that so this is going to be quite fun to paint and to detail this is going to be the most interesting part of the model I think and I've got an idea I think I want to do the wiring on it as well and I've got an idea on that as well so what I'm thinking now base paint everything with a um, Mr. Surfacer black and that will be the black as well for the chassis so let's get started painting
Well, it feels good to get some paint down. This is still just all mocked up. I've just been uh, dry fitting as usual. But um, I'm just going to tell you the next sort of things we're going to do. Is this radiator is a nice tight fit inside here. Oh, pops out. Right. Is I want to start constructing, obviously, the uh, interior. But in order to do that, we need to get the engine in. The engine's still dry fit. Everything's still dry fit. But this needs some detail painting. And also, I'm going to try and do the wiring on it. Why not? Just for fun. Just for you guys. Okay. So now the plan is to detail some of the components that I couldn't really paint in the right colors. I've got some metal colors. I've got the bronze, dark iron, and I've got the alum. Aluminumi? Aluminumi. Anyways, right, okay, we're just going to use dry brush technique. And basically, uh, yeah, this is more for you guys, really. But like this component here, we know this is meant to be steel. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to dry brush it, steel, and some of the other components, like metal colors, just to sort of give that effect. Um, if we see them afterwards, I don't really know, but we'll just do that anyways. Uh, it's really straightforward, this um, dry brushing stuff anyways. Uh, which one should we start with? Um, let's start with dark iron. I, I, like, I love this dark iron color. Like a nice steel color. What you do is just get some from the cap. That's what I do. I get some from the cap, first of all. And then um, get off the excess. You start dry brushing. Got to get a metallic feel for these components inside here and try to be a little bit more in tune with the painting diagrams. And I'll do the metal I'm doing the metallics first because I'll do the acrylics next. If I make a mistake with uh, metallics, you need to make sure you do some pretty... Uh, Good tidy up because um, they're so contrasty. But if we um, just do that first, any mistakes we can make, we can sort of correct them with the acrylics. The sump as well that will remain uh, that will remain black. That was the black part under here. Just showing you just how quick and easy this is. Now we'll talk about weathering later on. Anyways, this is not the most exciting thing to show you guys. But um, I'll do a bit more of this, come back and then we'll talk about the acrylics, huh?
Okay, so to start this assembly, first thing I'm going to do is just glue these two parts together because you can, and then we can start adding on this floor onto the chassis. Let's get on with it. Now this is the problem of course because we're sort of gluing part plastic and paint together you end up like gooey mess under there but just keep some pressure on it hold it together for you know 30 seconds a minute should be okay same sort of thing with the firewall just sort of hold it in place while it sets it's trying to spring apart because of the um, the steering column but just hold it and it'll set in place now for unknown reasons there's no decal there's no water transfer provided for the dashboard. So um, all I've done is just uh, black those in and just gone over the top with a silver pencil just to give the bevels, bezels. I'm not trying to even try and replicate the markings. Be careful the dash, it needs to slip over the steering column. No other way to do it. Well, unless you chop off the steering column and glue it back in, of course. Yep, you get a proper horn, a real horn. Uh, just another note as well, these are the pedals, obviously. Um, it has the add these on really early on and you meant to thread them through well obviously I'm not doing that I'll add them later on and if they fit or otherwise I'll make them fit it's just a lot easier this way Okay guys, so we've got all the interior together, all the components on there. I think I've got all the components on there. Started a light bit of weathering, just a bit of the wood chipping inside there. And also you saw me do the leather work on the seats. Um, need a bit of practice that. I'm not that great at that sort of stuff. But let's add some weathering to the interior now. And okay, so we're gonna make up, we're gonna use liquid pigments again. One of my favorites now, Dark Dust. And we dilute this down, it's a little bit too concentrated. We just want a light, dusty interior, give it that look. Um, start off with a little bit of water inside here. There we go. And then all we need, I think I've just dipped the brush in just to get a few drops of this out. Should do. There we go. Problem, of course, with this stuff is surface tension. Um, because it's acrylic, because it's all water-based, but I've got a solution for that. We're going to experiment doing something again. <laughs> right, okay, and also the other reason I'm using acrylics is because I've got these metallic on here. The metallics, um, because they're the, um, the ones from Mr. Color, any enamel products will react quite badly with them. So all we need to do is just dab on this acrylic wash, uh, we're going to hit the metallics as well. Just use a stipple action. And we'll go on this chest. 
as well. Now we've got the floorboard area. We're going to reinforce the joints later on, but we'll just um, start off with this dust watch. And as I'm at it as well, I may as well apply this to the chassis as well at some point. Why not now? This stuff is really magic when it dries. Really is a very nice product to use. I'm thinking even, should I hit the leather on the seats or not? I'm not too sure how the dust would look on the leather. There's only one way to find out. Should we do it? Yeah, why not? <laughs> oh no, I just ripped, I just uh, knocked off a pedal. I've got to tell you that, I did install the pedals and it's uh, relatively easy to fit them. Okay, just let that dry off and I'll come back in a second, show you what it looks like. Actually, let's hit the chassis as well. I've already started. Same procedure. Just a nice light wash over everything. Okay, you get the idea. Let's have a look in a couple of minutes, see what it looks like. Liquid pigments have dried up and let's see how they look like. Yeah, they look like crap, to be honest. This is what happens with them. You get all these like little pools. It's just the nature of it being the acrylic medium and being a pigment, you get all these little islands being formed. However, there is a solution. Within the uh, liquid pigment sets, you get this remover. So basically what we're doing is blending. Um, I don't like doing extra steps like this, to be honest. I find it a bit of a, sort of like a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest, but um, what we want to do was use acrylics. So, got a little bit of that on a cotton swab. All you need to do is just sort of scrub away at the stuff. It doesn't have any effect at all on the paint. And all we need to do is sort of hit the areas where there's like that tide mark the only thing is we sort of end up with a mm, sort of a flat sort of finish but anyways we're going to use this as a base effect in some areas i'm going to retain it as if they were like little puddles of mud and they dried like that yeah okay so we can live with that under here though underneath the chassis i think we'll do further effects under there at some point but I've actually i've already started blending some of this but i'll just show you yeah, show you on this side uh, again. Just take your thing. Let's let's remove the most obvious and ugly sort of looking stuff. And basically, when this dries again, there won't be tide marks. Now that's pretty bad. That front beam there that looks pretty awful. See what happens is. It's all to do with the surface tension of the acrylic medium. But what this will do, this just gives us the base of having pigments sort of in a, um, in a medium. So they don't come off. They don't come off with your fingers or anything like that. So that's pretty good. And then we're going to go back and we're going to do some other stuff later on. But anyways, I just want to show you how that looks. So I think let's just round off this episode, okay? Have a quick look at this thing. Zoom you in there. What do we think about it? So far, um, you know, not that difficult to build. Just be aware of the things I pointed out. You're just dry fitting constantly. Now, what you're not getting from this video is the fact that this instruction, um, this, these instruction steps have taken in total, I think about 15 or 20 hours. I'm not quite sure. I didn't count exactly, but it's absorbed at least a week. Um, but that's included painting as well, because we're ahead in the painting. We've got the interior sort of weathered, painted. So in the next episode, you know what we're going to do. We have to cross that boundary. We have to do all that riveting and stuff like that. But uh, hope you got something out of this one. Uh, tell me your thoughts. Are you interested in trying something like this? You end up with like a little jewel. It's much more um, detailed and also you learn a little bit about construction. Now, if you're a beginner and you take on something like this, 
um, yeah, I have no doubts you'll struggle. But what you might gain from it is actually getting some more experience. So bear that in mind, even if you know your first try at this isn't totally successful, you'll be gaining experience. But I want to see people succeed. That's the whole idea of this channel. Anyways, this is Bear. I'm out of here and see you in the next one.